reptilian abductions is one of the biggest topics these days. There's so much misinformation and propaganda with that all fear mongering that every time anyone gets abducted by any extraterrestrial, it's always done by reptilians. That's actually not true. All abductions are agreed on a soul level, which is a deeper subject. But so a few years back, I remember maybe four years or so, I was connecting at that time to feline extraterrestrial races, feline and lion races from Sirius A and Sirius B, one particular feline race within the Pleiades, and all within the astral and meditations, of course, particularly before bed, and then the intent would be set to project there astrally. But one night in my, my old house back at that time, I think I went to bed around maybe midnight, I went to bed that time, it was a little late, I was very tired, I was playing some meditation music, I remember a hallway light was on and I was telling myself, damn, I gotta get up and turn that light off now, but I'm just gonna relax for another minute and, and chill out and I'm pretty strict with that, two, three minutes, I usually get up and take care of lights, turn off AC, whatever needs to be done. And, and literally within seconds, within the very first layer, and I mean first layer of pre-sleep stage, very first layer of the body shutting down that phase, I felt intense energetic presence, electrical in nature, multiple voices whispering, telepathic of course, the gravitation towards the TV, which was in front of me, maybe 15 feet away towards my feet, towards the ottoman where my clothes were. So that, that became much more powerful and more powerful. So it didn't really freak me out. I was just curious. I never thought it would be a visit by any extraterrestrials, but I was practicing third eye opening and removing blackness at that time. So opened my third eye and what I saw was three feline beings, three lion beings, male in nature with tails. So the real lion extraterrestrial beings I was connecting to at the time. And they were at a 15 to 20 foot distance, no more than that at the door area, just below my bed. And one of them, the main one right in the middle growled at me, even if this was a lion growling in a zoo. So I was so excited, confused, maybe a little scared, but mainly excited. I was, this is exactly what I wanted. I mean, the excitement kicked in because I've been prepping myself for many years to, to, for these significant bedrooms, for these kind of open contacts, face-to-face -face contacts. And I know by opening up portals, they can't stay long. So I was really taking advantage of those couple, two minutes that I knew they're going to stay. I'm asking myself, okay, what do I ask them? What do I do? Do I touch them? Do I not? So I was very excited to the very most maximum degree. And immediately I asked right away, what race are you and what planet do you come from? How'd you get here? What density? So all the questions that generally we would ask an extraterrestrial. And they pretty much peacefully responded. They said, hey, we come in peace. We're not here to harm you. We just came here to say hello because we hear you, we see you, we feel you in the astral. We know you're connecting to us. We came here, do you want to go on our craft? We'll take you for a tour, we'll bring you back. We guarantee we'll bring you back. I said, yeah, absolutely. Not even thinking about any consequences. So they immediately grabbed my body, hands, feet, torso, the whole thing, carried me. And the way they, when I say carried me, I mean they put me through the wall. They brought me out through the bedroom wall towards the exterior of the house. And immediately, as soon as they did that, third eye shut down. But the audio remained. And I heard him whisper. I heard every single noise, every single sound. I heard ocean waves at that time, which absolutely confused me because it made no sense. I live in a rural country area. There is no oceans or lakes nearby. I heard water bubbles, so it was quite confusing, but I mean, it was a great joy. I said, hey, enjoy the ride. This is gonna happen once in a lifetime, let's do it. And I was very excited, so no fear was lingering around. And from my human perspective, I would say this took about 30 seconds, maybe a little less than that. The way I would count the time, the way I would count the seconds, count the minutes, half a minute. And we arrived at what appeared to be a very large room, military type of room, and they said, fully open your eyes. And I did open my eyes and what I saw completely shocked me. In front of me, I was standing in front of three green skin reptilians, not feline lion beings who I saw in the bedroom. And I remember being extremely alerted and confused, but quite angry at the same time. And I was quite pissed off, very aggressive. And, and I said, who are you? And where the fuck am I really? Like what's going on here? And I was in this massive room, military type of bunker, very advanced room with a lot of holograms around and technology I've never, never really seen before in my life. It definitely looked like an underground military type of bunker. There was no natural light, nothing at all. It was all artificial light. And the main being, the one of the threes, telepathically said not to worry and they meant me no harm. 
and they only desire to meet and co-create and introduce themselves as a race, as beings, as a simple greetings of hello and diplomatic way really to propose an idea, to propose a suggestion in a way that uh, would be beneficial to both of us. And they wish to communicate peacefully this way. So it seemed peaceful and I was alerted still, I was on my guard, but I said, okay. They said, look, we're gonna take you back. Obviously we guarantee you that, but we brought you here because we have some questions about your DNA. This is who we are. We're earth-based reptilian race. We've been here before dinosaurs. We live here. We're the custodians of this earth. We, we mean you no hostility, no harm will come to you. And they definitely never harmed me in any way. They were quite respectful. And they said that they verified and validated my existing reptilian connections and my own gravitation towards reptilian energy, my own reptilian DNA and previous lives as a reptilian and so forth. And they were very, very interested to talk to me and communicate in relation to my DNA. And I said, well, what's the What's the big deal about the DNA? I have hi hybrid DNA, I'm multidimensional DNA. Humans are, we're a hybrid race. They said, yeah, but there's more to the DNA you don't know about. I said, okay, but well, why did you lie? Why did you fool me that you're a lion being, a feline lion being? And they, he said, it's pretty much straight up. He said, if I told you we were reptilians, you would have never came with us. So we looked in your head, we looked in your consciousness, what you're quite comfortable with. And we appeared as that, sorry about that, but it's just the way we do things. And, said, all right, well, let me ask you some questions. So we exchanged information about their race, their base, where I was located, their DNA, their heritage, origin, lineage. They are the creation of Alpha Draconian Emperor. That's the DNA that they have. And I asked them really like, what's the big deal about my DNA? What, why did you gravitate towards me? There's billions and billions of humans out there. And he pretty much said that, yeah, you're right. There's many different humans that we connect to, but most are not aware because it would cause them too much trauma. And if we stood in front of them in their house, it'd be too jarring for them. It would cause them trauma that they would need psychologists, human psychologists. So we do contact them, of course, but we don't uh, leave the memory. And yes, humans definitely have ancestral fear, which we carry through epigenetics. So I definitely can understand that aspect. And I've learned that after years and years of dealing with reptilians, including Theta Tauri reptilians, which I'm most connected to now. Reptilians really have a different makeup of energy and we have a different makeup of energy and it's kind of unique and theirs is unique to us and ours is unique to them but within my DNA they were interested which was they had a there was a, a large portion of reptilian DNA a couple different mixes of reptilian DNA so a unique combo with the large reptilian DNA portion and then also with some DNA from Arcturus, Andromeda and Pleiades so this energetic key within me is what them three were quite curious to find out. And like I said, they were not hostile in any way. They were just bombarding with questions, but my mind could have only processed so much telepathy. But as they investigated my consciousness priorly, as they saw me in the astral with multiple different times, they asked and they, they received the permission from their own race, not from my soul. This was not approved by my soul, but they had to behave in a way they had to show no hostility no harm to be done just a peaceful removal and brought bringing me back to the house and they understood the network my mental energy was already open they understood i i personally understood reptilian consciousness so they definitely felt it was safe uh, that i would not leave me any trauma and it never really left me any trauma it was a phenomenal experience actually such an incredible story that i'll, I'll never forget it's very unique too so these three beings were in the mid-range structure who are the soldier layer, the mid-layer of the earth-based reptilians, so mid out of the three. And the first being who talked to me had 65% malevolency, and he said that he drops that down, but generally the malevolency is used for wars and other things that they do. They do a lot of reconnaissance missions, recon missions. They'll shapeshift into a human and join our society to investigate certain things. So a very, very interesting spectrum of things and examples he gave me. The one other being identified himself to be 25% benevolent and 75% malevolent. And the third being was in the 80 to 90% malevolency range, but all that was suspended. And it was just strictly neutral orientation. And when we spoke, very respectful, very respectful, direct eye contact, very kind, no growling, no hissing, no nothing that would be of the intimidation factor. They were quite respectful. And at this time, around that time, not that particular night, but I set up a lot of different security checkpoints within my own soul, within my own body. So different layers within the higher density layers and sub layers of my astral body to detect any abduction attempt or abduction possibility, a genetic extraction, 
to detect any kind of form of interference, whether it's organic or artificial talents, doesn't matter. Any avatar insertions, implant assertions, any of these de detection red flag check checks really would have to be checked and then put in place and to go off to be able to, to wake me up in my human body if these things started to occur in the astral. But none of these things went off. The fifth density layer, the fourth density layer, none of them went off because these beings never meant no harm. My human body never experienced any trauma, any genetic extractions, nothing. So I asked them, I said, where was I? Where, where did you take me? What's with the ocean? I, I remember being an ocean, being in the ocean. What's the deal? Where am I right now? And he said, you're in Africa. I said, how can I be in Africa if I live in Canada? Within 30 seconds, you took me here. He says, well, no, no, it appeared to you in 30 seconds, but we're able to take that 30 seconds or one minute or 30 minutes and stretch the time. We can make it into 20, 20 hours if we wanted to. So they can manipulate and stretch time. So we were in a Africa, <laughs> continent of Africa. And I mean, I live in Canada, Lake Ontario, Lake, Lake Erie, Niagara Falls region, quite far away from Africa. But this was a 350 to 425, as it was identified, kilometers north of the uh, southern Africa. And in that region, as they explain, is one of the largest hubs or one of the big hubs of the Earth-based reptilians. And today, if we look at a map, if we look at Google, that particular area where I was taken to is, is a region called Gaboroni which is province of Botswana, as well as there's a very large park there. And this is where they're located. The park is called Pila Nesberg National Park and the base is underground. So they brought me back shortly after that. And, and in a human perspective, so human time, I only stay there for less than two hours. But they brought me back to, to, to my bed, to Canada, to, to my bedroom. And I remember the moment I was brought back, as glad I was to be back, at the same time, I missed their interaction. It was fascinating speaking to them and just receiving their telepathy and telepathic intelligence. And I remember my body felt heavy and dense and boring in a way. I was staring at my ceiling trying to process what just happened. And lately I haven't really interacted with these three beings ever since I haven't interacted with their race, period. Earth-based reptilians and I don't really hang out anymore. From time to time, maybe once every two, three months, we'll cross paths in the astral. But with cons consistency and rigorous dedication, in the past few years have shifted certainly my focus still to stay within the reptilian consciousness the reptilian energies but to engage and connect to other reptilian beings and other races off-planet races of course independent races independent reptilian alliances councils including the alpha draconian empire and today the, that focus that at least my own goal energetic goal the connection goal of co-creation the goal of coexisting to just learn about each other mutual benefit has only grown to be much, much stronger. It's increased. It's became significantly stronger and firm, quite, quite more powerful. And since that time, back at that event in my bedroom, I've met probably a few different dozen uh, reptilian races, including Alpha Draconian races, uh, all within fourth, fifth, mainly fifth and sixth density races. And all of these experiences have been extremely exciting, extremely beneficial. Not one time was I ever harmed? Was I ever hurt in any way? I showed them respect. They showed me respect. These are extremely honorable, well-respected races, including the main race I'm mostly connected to, personal and greatest friends of mine in, in the fifth density layer, Theta, Tori, white reptilian race, who I often speak of. And I, and I strongly feel that any human getting to know a reptilian race or reptilian being on a diplomatic very professional, uh, neutral level can, can certainly benefit. It can bring benefit to both parties, their race and the human. This information they can give us about life and our origin, our DNA, and enabling our telepathy, psychic abilities, mental warfare. I mean, it's profound information, extraordinary type of information we don't find on the internet or in books. Learning from reptilians is extremely honorable prideful and it should be taken very seriously very professionally with utmost respect and gratitude and appreciation not to take it for granted not to summon these beings these beings are not summoned they don't care for that reptilians have taught humans they've taught me multitude of highly important things and tools and methods and tricks and tactics detecting things and doing this and doing that manipulating energy from 
advanced extraterrestrial remote viewing tactics and advanced telepathy to channeling abilities, integrating reptilian consciousness, removing traumas, how to heal traumas their way, and most importantly, mental warfare. These guys operate in a completely different principle, completely different operating system. Humans aren't used to that. So to get that piece of information and to learn from such a magnificent source of information, I mean, it's quite honorable in my personal opinion. And those humans that desire to connect to reptilians, I certainly urge them to do so. Earth-based reptilians, reptilians within the independent alliances, independent councils, independent federations, within the Alpha Draconian Empire, every human should have its own discernment, of course, to see what feels right, what does not feel right. But definitely, the Earth-based reptilians will be a closest match to us. They're very close to us. They live in one layer just above us, population of 800 million. And many of them, many of them desire to connect and co-create with humans. And I definitely agree with this.